Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I just wanted to go over a hot topic I've seen discussed online, as well as a common question asked in my comment sections. Is 12GB of RAM good enough for the Nintendo Switch 2? Well, in my opinion, for what the Switch 2 is, I say yes, and I'm going to explain in this video. But before I begin, if you're new to the channel and you enjoy tech videos, such as console and computer hardware deep dives, and the occasional news and rumor recap videos, consider subscribing so you can catch my weekly uploads. I tend to upload at least once a week or more during my free time. Finally, if you enjoyed this video at all, make sure to smash the like button, that way YouTube will share this video to others who may enjoy it as well. I really appreciate all of your support. Now let's get into my explanation on why I'm personally happy with 12 gigabytes of RAM on the Switch 2 and why I think it won't hold it back as badly as many assume. So for starters, let's do a basic and raw breakdown of the RAM for the Nintendo Switch 2 and then we'll see how it stacks up against the original Switch. Sometimes seeing this just written down in black and white really gives you a little bit of perspective. I've also already covered the rest of the Switch 2 hardware in prior videos you can find on my channel, and as the title suggests, I'm going to focus solely on RAM in this video for the most part. That said, according to shipping logs and motherboard analysis, the Switch 2 is expected to come with 12GB of LPDDR5X RAM, comprising two 6GB modules with a total docked bandwidth of 102GB a second and 68GB a second when in handheld mode. That's a massive 3 x jump in capacity and up to 4x jump in memory bandwidth from the original switch in docked mode which just had 4 gigabytes of lpddr4 ram and a dock bandwidth of just 25 gigabytes a second and only just over 20 gigabytes a second in handheld mode this large improvement in ram capacity and bandwidth gives the switch 2 a lot more breathing room for bigger more complex games with better graphics and higher resolutions and will help support all the other hardware improvements that the switch 2 brings to the table nicely in my opinion for example, the Switch 2's RAM upgrade ties into third-party support, an important area where the Switch 2 could really shine over the Switch 1. You see, the original Switch struggled with third-party ports, especially as of late, because it's 4GB of RAM and aging Tegra X1 chip. This hardware configuration just couldn't keep up with the demands of most modern AAA titles. Although I appreciate that they got games like Hogwarts Legacy or Mortal Kombat 1 on the Switch, they had to be heavily downgraded to run at all, and there were many other games that passed on the system completely as no amount of optimization or feature removal would allow them to be acceptably playable on the Switch. I don't want to sound all negative though, and I will stop here for a second to give the Switch 1 some credit. It did have a large list of ports that I thought I would never see on the system, but with at least a 3x increase in RAM, the memory capability of the Switch 2 falls more in line with current gen consoles and budget PC gaming hardware. Thus, in my opinion, the RAM won't be the sole reason for games not being ported to the console. The Switch 2 might not have 16GB of RAM like the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5, or even entry-level gaming handhelds, as I've seen a lot of people complain about, nor does it have super high memory bandwidth like the former, but 12GB is a lot closer and more manageable to optimize for than 4GB. It is night and day and doesn't even come close. It is my belief that even with 4GB less RAM and a massive memory bandwidth disadvantage over current gen premium consoles, developers will still be able to fine tune a lot of current gen titles and scale them graphically, and if need be, even remove features as needed to allow more third party games to run on this new Nintendo console than ever before. To back up my argument on this, the Switch 2 actually has 2 more gigs of RAM than the Xbox Series S, which if you don't count the current Switch, is currently the lowest spec current gen home console with 10 gigabytes of RAM and despite this can be optimized to run every single game it's much more powerful big brother the Xbox Series X can run. Developers typically have to cut back resolutions, settings, and sometimes lower FPS targets due to lacking memory coupled with overall GPU power and flat out just remove features altogether such as ray tracing but it can be done and games do run. This is the exact same idea with the Nintendo Switch 2. Developers already have to scale their game from high-end gaming rigs and premium consoles to low-spec gaming setups and consoles. So because of this example with hardware scaling, when it comes to third-party ports, I expect a surprising amount of quality current-gen games making it over to the Switch 2 because the hardware allows for the possibility for it in some form. As far as RAM goes, there will obviously be resolution and graphic settings cutbacks. You can only get so far with 102 gigabytes per second even if you have 12 gigs of RAM, and there will of course be probably aggressive use of DLSS, as well as the dreaded 30 FPS targets likely still being a common thing for the more advanced current gen game ports, but I do expect a lot of current gen titles on the system nonetheless. Now before you blast me in the comments, I've already gone over why it's important to not compare the Switch 2 to other consoles in other videos. AMD versus NVIDIA, the x86 instruction set with the Zen 2 CPUs versus the RISC instruction set with the ARM CPU, 
and with just a bunch of on paper data and no hardware in hand to do direct comparisons is essentially redundant but the reason i talk about this is to give people just an idea that is all this level of scaling developers are already used to doing with low spec computers and consoles is going to work wonders with the nintendo switch 2 and its improved hardware even early developer feedback suggests that ram is certainly not a reason for games to not be ported to the switch 2. in fact aside from extra tweaking none of its hardware has been super concerning for developers according to those who have opened up about this topic early which helps build my confidence for the system even further so far. So if we are comparing the Switch 2 to anything directly, it's best to stick to the Switch 1 as its relative comparison for now. And with that said, we must not forget about first party titles and what type of masterpieces we'll see from Nintendo and what they'll be able to produce for the Switch 2 using this new hardware that it has, knowing what it's created in the past with the hardware on the Switch 1. With just four gigs of much slower RAM and much, much weaker overall system specs, the Switch 1 still has beautiful and large impressive first party games on the system that squeeze every single ounce of juice out of the hardware, like Mario Odyssey, Pikmin 4, Mario vs. Rabbids, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I can only imagine how these games would look and run with the hardware the Switch 2 has. I also think of first party games that had sights way beyond what the Switch 1 could handle even though they tried their best. The latest Pokemon games and Xenoblade Chronicles 3 being the first few that come to mind. I can only imagine the level of scope these games could have achieved if the Switch 1 had even just the RAM upgrade the Switch 2 has. Not even considering the GPU, CPU, or any of the other new hardware improvements. The worlds could be as large as they are, if not larger, with more details, complexity, and draw distances, all while providing higher, if not more stable performance, if the Switch 1 just tripled its RAM and quadrupled its bandwidth. So knowing what Nintendo and its first party, as well as what third party developers were able to do with the Nintendo Switch Switch 1 and its limited 4 gigabytes of much slower RAM and overall much weaker hardware combined with knowing the hardware improvements the Switch 2 has, my overall consensus is this. I believe the 12 gigs we are getting with the Switch 2, even at its 102 gigabytes a second max bandwidth, will not hold the Switch 2 back and prevent optimizations from developers to get games running any more than, let's say, a Steam Deck. If low spec gaming setups with entry level graphics can run a game, especially those with likewise lower memory bandwidths of the Switch 2, such as the RTX 2050 and laptops, GTX 1650 and desktops, AMD APUs running Radeon 660Ms or 760M graphics and some handhelds, then the Switch 2 should be able to run the same game. And with assistance from DLSS, a light operating system allowing as much of that 12 gigabytes as possible for games, and clever developer optimizations may even run better than all of these examples at comparable resolutions. We ultimately have to see what happens when the Switch 2 is released at some point this year and what games do come to the console and what concessions are made to allow them to work in general. But for now, these are my thoughts and my beliefs on the system, and that's all this video is. My thoughts and my beliefs for those who care to listen. If you stayed this far and watch this entire video, then please comment yay switch to below and include what you are most excited about with Nintendo's latest console. That way I can personally thank you in the comments for helping support my channel and my work and so we can engage with each other even further. And that is all I have to share with you in today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. You have the great rest of your morning, day, or evening, and I'll catch you in next week's video. Peace.